I've got a quote here I'll read that he wrote concerning the Jeep vehicle. It kind of sums up what the vehicle was doing. Good Lord, I do not think we could continue the war without the Jeep. It does everything. It goes everywhere. It's as faithful as a dog, as strong as a mule, and agile as a goat. All the time it carries twice what it was designed for and still keeps on going. It doesn't even ride so badly after you get used to it. The Jeep is a divine instrument of wartime locomotion. Ernie Pyle. All right, so this is a vehicle that is pretty special to me. I really, ever since I was little, I always loved the World War II Jeep. There was always something about it, and it was always kind of hard to get them in 124th scale. I remember having um, Matchbox ones, um, but it's just, it's it's really cool. I really dig these things, and... I watched a documentary on one, and it's just one of the most fascinating things you'll ever watch. Like, I, I highly recommend that video. Um, but this is the Jeep. This is the Hasegawa kit, something that's kind of hard to find information on, on especially on YouTube. There is two videos. That's right, two videos on this thing. One of which is one who is completely built up. And has music. Second is a guy showing a bunch of parts. Um, and the video is in a different language. So I have no idea what the fuck is going on in that video. So, yeah. So let's get into mine. This is the Hasegawa kit. Very, very nice kit. I really enjoyed it. Um, not as sophisticated as the Italeri kit. But it is really, really cool. By the way, totally check out Spencer1984, his YouTube channel. That he built the Italeri kit. It's called the Kelly's Heroes Jeep. Um, I highly recommend checking out those series. It's just three videos. Um, they're not very long, but he does go into great detail about that kit. Highly recommend it um, if you're considering that kit. Um, some faults. I want to talk about that. Number one is... The grill. The grill is beautiful. I love it. Um, I'm not talking about the, the part that's green. I'm talking about the radiator and the headlights. The kit tells you to put that in first. But you should really wait until you have the engine in and have the chassis and the body on the, on the frame. Then put that in because the way that the kit goes together, it will push it out. So... Just, that's another fault that I had with this kit. That's one of, like, very few. Um, mostly, <laughs> everything else that I did was kind of my fault. Um, like, for example, when I was building it, I switched the rear wheels with the front ones. And I'm like, oh shit, wait, I put the wrong ones there and I swapped them back. So, not really that big of a deal. I fixed that. And another small fault I could talk about is the gun. That little stand there was horrible. The things that go into that pole thing that the machine gun is on, the holes are way too, way too small. You can't really peg anything in, and the kit makes it seem like it just snaps in there, but it doesn't. Um, you have to be very, very precise with it. Um, but other than that, this is a beautiful kit. Absolutely phenomenal. I cannot wait to get my MPC one. It's still sitting at the post office. Um, I have to go pick it up. Um, because they can't deliver it. Um, I have the form, the little slip to pick it up. And now we're going to do a comparison. I'm going to try to build the MPC one relatively close to this one. I'm going to try to copy it. And just see how they compare, because this was a really good kit, and I don't want to put the MPC kit down. Um, I want to see how it's going to compare, but holy shit, there were a lot of small parts on this kit. I need to emphasize that. The hood latches, the hood, little hood pins, yeah, you have to put those on. Those don't come molded. <laughs> and that was terrifying. I felt like I was doing open heart surgery there. Um, in terms of paintwork, it was very simple. 
if you look at a lot of World War II Jeeps, there's not a lot of colors. It's mostly just olive drab on everything, except for, like, the seats. Um, I've seen, uh, uh, you know what, I'll get to that when I get to the engine bay. The engine bay. Um, let's go ahead and just do that, actually. That folds up. I've seen some people paint the engine different colors. From silver to black to red. But, from what I've seen, I believe I did that incorrectly. I think that's supposed to be black. Um, from what I've seen from photos and even restorations, the engine block was painted olive drab. Same as the rest of the vehicle. So, yeah, I did the headlights in black. Oops, that's the windshield. Uh, kind of cool, nifty thing. Some of the earlier Jeeps had it, but some of the later ones didn't. Um, you could fold up the headlights by removing a bolt, and it would turn upwards, and you could illuminate the engine bay. So if you had engine problems, you would do it like that. There's a lot of things you have to assemble on this kit, but everything just really goes together beautifully there's no flash on i think the only flash that i had was on the end of the gun barrel and it was so tiny i could scrape it off with my finger like i didn't like i still use my exacto knife but like it was that small like incredible kit nowhere near as crazy as the italeri kit but still really nice Really, really nice. I, I dig this kit. One small other complaint I had is that drive shaft. First, you have to bend it at such a weird angle to get it in there, but it does fit. It's just kind of finicky. The suspension is very weird because normally on Ravel kits or any model kit, you normally do this and you glue it to the leaf springs. This tire is fully glued in. I need to fix that. But with this kit, those little pegs you can see there underneath, kind of hard to see from this angle, you glue that to the frame, and then you put the leaf springs over it, which is super interesting. I've never done a kit like that before. <clears throat> so that was kind of cool. Very interesting. We did have a little bit of a catastrophe. The decal ripped and I had to paint. Even after the paint was dry and I matte coated it, it still looks awful. I couldn't repair the decal. I couldn't move the decal anymore. So that's kind of a bummer, but Considering I'm going to display the model like this, because I really dig the look of it with the with the windshield down, because it looks really freaking cool like that. I love when even new Jeeps do that. It's not that big of a deal. So, Again, with the shovel and the axe on the side. Again, in every single restoration video that I've seen, those, have all, those are all olive drab. They're not a different color. I've seen some where they're wooden, but I just didn't think that looked right to me from so many restoration videos that I've seen and so many other pictures of other builds and stuff like that. It's, I don't know. I've seen some people paint the shovel and the axe silver, and I'm like, I don't think they wanted silver because that's such a shiny paint. And you don't want shiny on a military vehicle. You got the M1 Grand in there. I would never shoot that gun. <laughs> Good lord, man. The M1 Grand, that is not made of modern parts at all. That is just wood and steel. And it is heavy. I've held one. I'm never firing one, though. There's the blackout light, I believe that's called, on the fender. 
it's missing a piece. I don't know where it is, but looks close enough. Probably not even going to be even noticeable. So not that big of a deal. The bottom of the car and how the firewall goes in and everything was a lot more complex than I thought it was. Um, you see those like cross member things here? This I'm talking about. I'm not sure what that's called. It's part of the frame or part of the chassis. You'd think that's molded in. That is not. You have to attach that. But everything went together really nicely. That even like almost snaps in so that wasn't even that big of a deal. Um, the only thing, I used, uh, Tamiya glue on this thing. The only thing I used super glue on was this seat. For some reason, the driver's seat was being a pain in the ass. Just would not stay down. Kept coming out. I don't know what happened to the Tamiya glue. It just was not, was not cooperating. So I super glued that puppy down. And it's not moving anymore. So... That's good. Got the machine gun. Painted the handle on it brown to look like wood. Got your four-wheel drive and two-wheel drive shifters. I believe one is for low gear and high gear. Back of it. I'm still not sure what to do next with this thing. I think maybe I might dirty it up a little bit. I didn't do any like weathering or rusting because I wanted it to look like a new Jeep. Like it maybe it's been restored or maybe it's just come out of Ford's factory or Willie's factory. <clears throat> because Willie's and Ford were making them. I know I've seen like People were giving like, <laughs> you know, like, how dare the U.S. the U.S. government like do that to Bantam, where they shared their concept and everything, and their their blueprints and everything for the car. I'm just like, well, they say in the documentary that Bantam only had like two thousand people at the time working in their factories. Compare that to Ford with two hundred thousand and Willys with fifty thousand. At the time, you could kind of see why the U.S. was kind of iffy about Bantam. Especially with how demanding this vehicle would need to be produced. I I see why. I mean, I do feel bad that Bantam didn't get to do it. But I, I understand why. It's just, yeah. I, I don't blame them for... Sharing that blueprint and everything. I like that the muffler is the one silver thing on this vehicle. <laughs> Except for um, the radiator thing. The radiator cap. Um, I might dirty this thing up a little bit. But I'm not sure yet. I need to think more on it. But I absolutely love the Jeep. So cool. I, even though no one knows where the name came from. I dig it. It's just such an awesome vehicle. Like in that documentary, like the stuff that they talk about what it did, it's just just insane. Like I love it to death. It's such a cool vehicle. And in fact, I brought two of its younger siblings here to help with this. We got Wrangler and we got Renegade, both of which are very faithful to the original. Both have the slotted grille, round headlights. The Wrangler, of course, being the one that looks the most like the old MB. Um, you know, with the big fenders and, you know, slotted grille and the way that the, with the hood latches and everything. But I don't say, I say don't sleep on the Renegade. Like, it's, it's getting great reviews from people who daily drive them. But I've heard a lot of Jeep people be like, no, you know, it's, it's just an SUV. You know, it's it's nothing really special. But honestly, like, watch testing videos of it. It can handle a lot. It's not just a city-bound vehicle. Like, it, it could actually, it's actually pretty good off-road. I have, 
I gotta give credit. I mean, out of the three, out of the two, rather, if I had to go with Wrangler or Renegade, I'd probably go with Renegade because I really like it. Um, and that being said, I'd still really love the Wrangler, of course. <laughs> I would love an MB, but Jesus Christ, I would have to get used to it. Because, holy crap, the way that you operate them is very weird, to say the least. You, <laughs> you have to... Now, normally, when you switch upwards in a vehicle, you know, when you switch to first gear, you, you go up, right, on the gear shift? Don't do that in an MB. You're going to go into reverse. <laughs> you starting to see what I'm talking about? They're a little bit quirky. Just a little bit. But I love them. I really do. Just, what a phenomenal vehicle. Like, what they were able to do with this thing, I think, is nothing short of legendary. Like, you look at all the cars from that point, like, in that point in time, and really, there was nothing like it. I mean, they didn't know what the hell to call the thing. They just called it the Model B. Um, the Army referred to it as a GPV, General Purpose Vehicle, um, which was, it was just meant to be a light recon vehicle that would drive and, you know, report back to, you know, what they seen. That is not what the Jeep was wound up used for. <laughs> well, probably one of many things that... The, that was probably one of many things that this thing was used for, I mean. Because this thing was used for almost everything in World War II. Like, it is nuts. The amount of stuff that it did. Um, <laughs> the first time the word Jeep was documented was when they were taking a reporter for a ride in it. And I believe... I don't know if it was it was the Model A or the Model B. I think it might have been the prototype still. And they were showing them what it can do when they were driving upstairs with it. And someone asked the person driving, what's this thing called? And he replied, it's a Jeep. And that's apparently the first time the word Jeep has ever been documented. We'll never really... I don't think anyone is going to figure out where the word Jeep came from. Ever. I mean, unless we can time travel. But I just... I find it crazy that this whole brand... The, literally, an entire brand spawned from a name that no one can pinpoint the origins to. Ford. Henry Ford. Dodge. Dodge Brothers. Like, Jeep. No one knows. That is, it's crazy to me that no one knows where the hell the name came from, but it, it stuck. And I love it. <laughs> it's such a cool thing. So, yep, this has just been my little work in progress. In the next video, um, I don't know if the next video I post is going to be a model-related video or a Wings of Fire-related video. Um, so I'll let you guys, you guys will see. Um. But in the next one, in regarding my models, we're going to have the MPC Jeep and hopefully have that painted and built in a similar way. And we're going to take a look at how they compare. Um, I know it's probably going to be inferior to this, but eh, I want to give it a shot, you know? I feel like MPC maybe shouldn't be thrown under the bus. So we're going to be taking a look at that. That should be really fun. Um, and I will see you guys next time.